Tonight we're going to be doing supper again. Uh, we're going to be having fried chicken, mac and cheese, green beans, rolls, and chocolate cake. Uh, must sign up by, to, by tonight uh, so the food can be purchased and ordered. If you sign up and change your mind, just please let us know so the food doesn't get wasted. Um, also, we're needing someone to do children's class on Wednesday night. If you're interested in doing that, uh, you can probably see Mallory on that one. I don't know where she went. She is here somewhere. So if you're interested in helping with Wednesday night classes for the kids, see Mal. Um, we got the kids' rodeo coming up, in a, or the youth rodeo coming up in a couple weeks. That's September the 16th. If you need inform information on that, Cheston's right there in the back. Wave your hand for the people that don't know you. Never mind. Put, you, put it back down. Um, also, one last thing that we have is the theme leader meeting. Uh, that will be right after church is over. Uh, if you're a team leader, please stick around for that. That's all I got for us. Let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just want to thank you for allowing us to be here and be here in your house and in your presence, God. God, we can feel you moving, and we know that, that you're surrounding this church today, God. God, we thank you for everything that you've been working on lately, for, for the things that, that you have in motion, for the things that you have growing God, we thank you and we praise you for that. God, this morning I pray for Will as he gets up here and, and brings the songs. God, I pray that, pray that you get him out of the way, get that you lead every word that comes from his mouth, God. God, I pray that we get the messages that you have prepared for us in those songs. God, I pray that you don't allow our feet to stand still, that you don't allow our hands to stay by our sides, that we clap and we sing and we praise you this morning. God, this morning I want to pray for Matt as he gets up here and brings your word. I pray that you get him completely out of the way. God, I pray that not a word comes from him that doesn't come straight from you this morning. God, I want to pray for the people that are lost, that are sick, that are hurting, the people that don't know you. God, I pray that they come to find you, that they make a relationship with you. God, I pray for the people that drive by here. God, I pray that they know that you are in this church today. God, this morning we just want to tell you how much we love you, we thank you, we praise you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs> How are we this morning? Good? Good deal. Do a few here that uh, I'm sure quite a few of you will know. Y'all feel free to sing along. Well, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. Tell you what, I kind of like having them words up on the screen that way if you forget. Sound like I just need to turn around and just play that way. What do y'all think? It might be better that way. Uh, we're uh, excited to be here this morning with you. Excited to play some music, a lot of familiar faces, um, and uh, just looking forward to worshiping. Carry my 
quiet on us this morning already somebody stay up too late watching college football surely not sorry Raven I didn't put lyrics to this one either but this is uh, one that uh, I like to do back home down there at Auburn quite a bit Cowboy Church uh, got a good meaning behind it a little fun to play uh, old chunk of coal if any of y'all are familiar with it Papers are always good and fun to flip around here.
love that song, especially to listen to on a Sunday, because I think sometimes we don't realize that as often as we probably should. Um, as long as all that hope's there, there's quite a bit to work with. Just glad it says make a joyful noise, doesn't say it's got to be a good one.
said wrong The world thy hands have made I see the stars I hear display ready, Mr. Matt? You know, I just praise God that we're on his time this morning and not Matt Canoles, because we'd all be out of luck. Amen.
Hey, that sucker can sing, but he ain't funny, is he? I'll leave the jokes. No, nah, don't leave them to me. Hey, man, I, 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 I thank Will so much for coming. Y'all don't know what a blessing that young man has been to me in my life. And if you really had the opportunity and you don't have time today to really, really get to know him, it would be amazing, man, the story he could tell you. But I thank you, my friend, for coming. But I also, man, I, I golly, I just can't help. I've sang that song 10,000 times, and I couldn't help but stand back there this morning and think how great he is. And, and the reason, man, I, I think for so long I sang that song because I grew up in church and I knew that song. But, man, it wasn't until I realized what a piece of crap I was to I realized how awesome that song is and how great he is because I do not deserve anything he has ever given me, and I am so thankful for that. This morning, Miss Caitlin's got the Children's Church. If y'all want to go back there with her, looks like she's recruited Mr. Matt for all y'all hoodlums. Well, make sure you don't let none of them out, all right? All right, security. Hey, let's, let's pray this morning before we get started. Father, I just come to you, Lord, I, man, I am so thankful for you. Man, God, I could look around and be so thankful for thousands of things this morning. But God, I, there's not a doubt in my mind your presence is here. And so, Father, I just pray that it would be you that speaks this morning. God, I am so thankful for what you did on that cross over 2,000 years ago. God, I do pray this morning that for somebody here, maybe they thought they had religion or maybe they thought that, that man, they knew and, and maybe they repeated some words one time or maybe they did something in Bible school or Sunday school, or maybe they even came to the altar and they just kind of wonder if it was real or not. God, this morning I pray that they would not leave here without knowing how great you truly are. Because when they realize how sorry they are and what you did for them, man, they can't help but realize how awesome you are. God, I pray as we open your word this morning, Lord, that it would not be my words that speak because I have nothing to offer. But God, I pray it be your word that speaks to their heart, to their minds this morning. God, I pray that we not just come to church this morning, but God, that we have church. God, there's not a doubt in my mind that your presence is in this barn this morning. So, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would speak and embody the rest of this time this morning. God, I pray we not leave here the same way we came in. But God, we allow your word to change us. God, we allow the change that you create in us to impact our community when we walk out of those doors. Father, I love you so much. I praise you and I ask these things in the most precious name. Amen. Hey, I, I got a question I want to ask you guys this morning, and, and I would be willing to bet, regardless of how arrogant or cocky you are, and a lot of times that's why you're this way, at least for me, that was a lot of times in my life I was arrogant and I was cocky because I was trying to compensate for something. But how many of you guys this morning don't feel like you're worthy? You don't feel like you're good enough. You don't feel like you have this or have that. I bet there's a lot of you guys sitting in here this morning because I, every time I look at mine, I realize I don't feel like I'm good enough looking to be married to my wife. I know there's some of y'all in here that are way worse off in that aspect than I am. Y'all going to laugh at Will's joke? That was lame. And I just lay something out there and I get a couple of giggles. But no, but I bet yesterday's y'all watch the games, and I don't know why they do it. It frustrates the crap out of me. But we, mar we take a top five, top ten team, and we match them against somebody who's just trying to find enough money to pay the janitor, right? And, like, we let them play. And I guarantee you those schools that showed up to play, you can look at the scoreboard on all those games because it was 52 to 0 or, or 35 to 6. It, it was, I mean, nothing. But I guarantee you those schools that showed up to play yesterday, they walked in there probably not feeling like they had what it took to win. I bet there's a lot of you that have entered a rope or a rodeo at some point in time in your life, and you look at the competition, and you're like, man, I, I don't even know why I'm here. I bet there's a lot of you that have showed up to play a sport or an instrument or whatever it is that you do that you're good at, that you like, and, and you see people that are there, and you see that they do things better than you do them, or you feel that way anyway, and so you don't feel like you're adequate enough. What about this? I bet there's some of you in here. I, matter of fact, I wouldn't even bet this. I, this is a 100 to, I mean, this is a guarantee. I know there are some of y'all that are sitting in here this morning 
that you know God is calling you to do something mighty and powerful. You know God is, is leading you. He's been nudging you to start this, to do that, to do this, and you know it. Like, you know it every time you hear somebody else speak, you're like, man, I think I could do that. Every time you hear somebody else sing, you're like, man, I think I could do that. Every time somebody else leads the kids, you're like, man, I think I could do that. But then in the back of your mind, you're like, hey, I, I don't think I speak well enough. I don't think I have the equipment. I don't think I have the tools. I don't, I don't think that, that I have the ability to do this. This morning, I want to tell you something. In Jeremiah 1.5, it says this. It says that before, that he knew you before he knitted you together in your mother's womb. So, like, he knew you. He created you with a purpose and a plan to do something. He, he, he made you, and that's crazy to me to think that, like, even before you came out of your mother, like, God had put you together in a specific and a certain way. But yet this morning, you're like, hey, I, I just can't do that because I don't have enough. Well, this morning, I, I hope if you get nothing else out of this, I hope that, that, that this morning that, that you understand this, that it's time to quit complaining that you don't have enough and just start using what you have. This morning I prayed that because I promise you as I was thinking about this this week, I was like, man, I, I remember when I knew God was calling me to do this and I've known it for 20 years or 10 years, 13 years, however long it was. And like I, I knew, but I just didn't feel like I had it in me. And, and I, I remember thinking, man, like God, and it's such regretful for me to think about now, like, hey, what, what could I have done in those 10 years that I was still out there acting like a heathen instead of doing what it was God called me to do? So this morning, maybe that's where you are, but maybe you, you look at what you have and you don't feel like you have enough because you don't know that you have enough Bible knowledge or you don't think you speak clearly enough or you don't think that you're eloquent enough or you don't think you're pretty enough or you don't think you sing well enough. That, that this morning, that you don't feel adequate. I, I want to share a couple of things with you this morning and then I, I want to I just... Man, read one little story that's so impactful to me this week that I want to share with you. But, but I want for you that don't know, just maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're like, hey, I, I, don't, I don't have enough. Man, I want you to think about in Matthew chapter 14 when Jesus was preaching to the thousands of people there and it was getting late in the day and, and the disciples come to Jesus and we talked about this before and they're like, hey, man, these people are getting hungry. Jesus wants you to send them home. Because it's fixing to be time to eat and there's not any food. And Jesus looked at them and he said, you feed them. There's a whole message in that right there. But, but the disciples go and they find this little boy who has a couple of fish and a couple of loaves of bread. And they bring it back. See, the disciples, even those that have been walking and following with Jesus, they, they, they came back to Jesus and they're like, man, we, we don't have enough right here. What, what about this? What, what, what about this? How many of y'all look at Moses in the Bible? I mean, like, how cool would it have been to be Moses standing at the Red Sea, and they're like, man, we're fixing to die. Pharaoh's army's fixing to come and, and kill us, and we're going to have to jump in here and drown or get eaten by sharks. And, and God tells Moses to pick his staff up, and when he does, the sea parts. How cool would that have been Moses? Right? Like, we look at him as a hero, like a Billy Graham, Right? But, but if you back up in Exodus chapters 3 and 4, there's conversations that go that between God and Moses when God's telling him to go and get his people. And, and Moses asks God questions like, man, who am I? Man, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe what I say? Can I tell you this? And, and, and I will say this 100% because it would be really easy to get to, to feel discredited and like you're not enough. If you start doing whatever it is that God's calling you to do, and you don't see results. Because like in our life, how do we determine results, right? Like, like it would be easy as a church to say, well, man, unless we're having four services that are completely packed out, and people are sitting on the outside on tailgates, then this isn't successful. It would be easy to say, man, if there's not people that are coming to the altar every single Sunday getting saved and baptized, that this isn't being successful. You know what it is about what success looks like when it comes to God calling us to do something? Whether or not we do it. That's it. It doesn't matter. It, it, the results doesn't matter. They're in his hands. Thank God that is so freeing for me to know that it doesn't matter. I, all I got to do is do what he's called me to do, and then he'll take care of the rest. But that was Moses' problem, too, because he was like, man, what if they don't even believe me when I come to them? And then Moses goes back to God, and he's like, man, I don't even speak good, dude. I, I can't even talk clearly. How, how are they going to even understand? 
stand. And then finally, I love this about Moses. He's like, God, just do, just send somebody else, man. Like, come on. Like, I seen nobody at the gas station this morning. And send him. Let him go do it. You ever felt the exact same way? I know what I think it my li- about my life. I have. If you flip through the Bible in Judges, there's this guy named Gideon. There's a whole organization built around this one man. Matter of fact, they came to the rodeo and handed out Bibles. It's an awesome deal, man. They, they're all, this whole organization is built around all around this one man. <laughs> but if you read through Judges, Gideon asked God, why is this happening to me? You ever been there? You ever been like, God, man, why am I going through this? Like, I desire to, to, to do this thing you're calling me to do. I desire this. But why in the world is this happening to me right now? If you keep reading through Judges, you would find out this too. That Gideon's clan was the weakest and the smallest of all of them. See, a lot of times we put so much, man, so much whatever on the fact that, that this, this is bigger and better and faster and stronger and greater But the more I read through this book, those are not the people that God uses because if that was the case, God would have used Goliath to slay David, not David slay Goliath. Just ponder on that for a second. When you start to think that you're not big enough, that you're not good enough, when you read through Jeremiah, man, Jeremiah says, God, I'm too young, dude. Like, man, get somebody older that's wiser, that knows more. Get somebody else. Man, one of the coolest ones to me, though, is in Matthew there's a Roman soldier in, in the book of Matthew, and, and it says that he sends a message to Jesus because he, he believes in what Jesus is doing, and Jesus is walking around healing these people, right? Like, man, he's, he's doing all these miraculous, awesome things. And the Roman soldier has a sick child at home. And he sends a message to Jesus, and he says this. He says, and Jesus, I, I'm not even worthy for you to enter my house but could you please just heal my son I'm not even worthy for you to enter my house man if any of y'all ever looked at your life and thought man I'm not even worthy I I know for me man so many times like I I don't I'm not man I wish I well there's part of me I say I wish but then in reality I'm glad y'all don't if y'all like really knew me and knew what goes on in here sometimes like man you'd be like dude you you need a straight jacket cuz Like, man, it is, but I feel so unworthy because I know how messed up I am. I I know how messed up my life is. But yet it's because I realize how messed up it is, I realize how great he is. But I go back to what I said just a second ago. So many times we feel like as people that God's calling to do something mighty and miraculous. I I want you to think about this in, in for real, for real. Like, man. How many times do you see something going on, like, like something new, some, something new, something big, something great, and you're like, man, I could do that. Like, I know I could do that. I, I know, and it doesn't even have to be that huge. I, I look around this morning, and there's guys that are sitting in here this morning that I know I've went to before and said, hey, man, can you do the devotion? They're like, oh, no, I, 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 I can't. And yet when they do it, it's amazing. It's amazing. I've seen young ones. I've seen old ones. I've seen ones that say, I can't speak good. And yet, man, when they just allow God to use them, he does exactly what I said. When we're obedient, man, he blesses that. But so many times we don't feel like we're enough. We, we don't feel like what we have is enough to even give. I want to share these two stories with you because I think they're absolutely amazing. Because there's a story in Matthew chapter 12, and Jesus is talking, and and, and they come to, these people are at the church, and this rich man comes, and and he dumps some money. I'm talking about a lot of money, a lot of money into the the old offering barrel at the cowboy church they had back then. I'm sure they did. But anyway, like they, he dumps all this money in there, and then in comes walking this little old widow lady who has absolutely nothing except for these two little coins. And she puts them in there. And Jesus asked them, who gave the most? Now see, from our eyes, we look at that and we're like, man, obviously the dude that wrote the big check. No, that's, that's not who, ha- who gave the most. It was the little widow lady. Because it wasn't something that she just brought to give. She gave all she had. 
But how easy would it have been for her to watch that man put a big check in the offering barrel and be like, man, I ain't got nothing, and turn around and walk out the door. You see, this little lady that I want to talk to you about this morning knew something that most of us don't realize. All she had to do was give everything she had. All she had to do was give everything she had, and it was enough. I told y'all, I've been hung up in 1 Kings for a while, and, and man, it, it is just so good. But in 1 Kings chapter 17, we talked about this before, there's another story of a widow woman who is, has, it's just her and her son, and her husband's passed away, and she has no means to, to financially or, or, or physically support her and her child no longer. And so she makes this decision. She has enough bread and enough, enough flour and enough oil to make one more loaf of bread. And she's going to make that bread. And she's going to feed it to her and her son. And then after that, they're just going to sit there until they die. That's the point. Read it. 1 Kings 17. Elijah comes up and he says, hey, ma'am, could you make me something to eat? And she says, hey, dude, this is all I have. Matter of fact, I was fixing to bake this little cake. And me and my son were going to eat it. And then we're just going to sit here until we die. And Elijah said, man, would you bring me some first? Would you bring, man, I want to just, just ponder on this. If somebody showed up in Fayetteville, Alabama, and you had enough for one more little Debbie cake, and, and some dude comes knocking on the door and be like, hey, God said for me to have a bite first. Yeah, if, if there's not a double barrel in his face, right? I mean, think about it. We, we take this thing way too and not get in our context too many times. How many of y'all mamas, if you knew this was all you had left, are going to come give this prophet Elijah the first bite? This woman knew something that I don't want you to leave here without knowing this morning. So many times we go through life and we look at what we have, and it's not enough. And the reality is this, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's never going to be enough. But the reality is, when you put it in the hands of Jesus, it's always an abundance. I go back to that story when the the disciples brought Jesus the loaves and the bread, and he said Jesus took them in his hands, and he broke them, and he gave thanks, and then he started dispersing them. If you read the end of that story, it says that there was 12 baskets left over. Thousands of people eating, and there was 12 baskets left over. The same thing can happen in your life. But you got to be willing to be obedient to what it is God's called you to do. If you got your Bibles, and this is going to be not long at all, I promise. But in Acts chapter 3, and I keep bouncing for, back and forth between Kings and Acts. But, man, if you were here Wednesday night, man, I pray that you, that, that you understand and follow along. Because in, Act, in Wednesday night, we talked about Acts chapter 2. And, and I would say this, too. Man, if you are missing out. This has nothing to do with the sermon. This is just free and extra. Like, if you're not coming on Wednesday nights, I'm not trying to shame you into coming. I want you to come because it is friggin' awesome. I don't know of another church. I, I, I guarantee I would bet everything I have right now, which ain't much, and everything I'll ever have, that there was not another church last Wednesday night that had teenagers and grown-ups playing volleyball. There might have been some churches doing that. But there was not another church that had teenagers and adults playing volleyball together using a calf dummy as the net. It, it, there was, there's not another church nowhere that did that. I know it. But that's what I watched. And I'll be honest with you, man, I really felt like God was calling me to share on, on Acts chapter 2 because I feel like as a church that's where we got to get to going to. But I told Dakota, I stood right there because, man, we had, we had done eight together. And I just sat there and the picnic tables were full of people. And then we're just going to let them blow. And there was kids, there was two or three games of football going on, and they were playing volleyball right here, and I didn't want to stop it. I didn't want to stop and have Bible study because I looked, and I'm like, man, this is what church is supposed to be about. Man, just folks loving on each other, folks just cutting up, and this was it. So if you're not, if you're missing Wednesday night, I'm just telling you, you're missing a blessing. But Wednesday night, we talked about Acts chapter 2. And I just want to give you just a little bit of a backstory. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. So in Acts chapter 2 is where we take where the church started in the Bible. And and Peter and and the other disciples start preaching. And it says, man, they start meeting in each other's home. They start, man, worshiping. They start gathering uh, resources and helping people in need. And and it says that, I'll read the last verse, the last sentence of chapter 2. It says, each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Each day. The Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. 
So you get that. God has established the church in Acts chapter 2. The very next chapter in Acts is this. And, and I don't really know how else to do this besides just to read it. So I'm going to read through it, and then I want to come back and just show you some things. In Acts chapter 3, it says this. It says, Peter and John went into the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. And Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. And the lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I do not have silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man to the right, by the right hand and helped him up, and as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. The walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God, and when they realized he was the lame beggar that they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement in Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this, and why stare at us as though we made this man walk by our own power or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who brought this glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. There's a lot of good stuff in that story. But here's what I want to hear. I, I just want to share three or four really quick things as I, as I think about that story is this, man. How many of y'all, when you think about Moses and the Red Sea, I, I would just about be willing to bet this morning that, and go out on a limb and bet everything I got and everything I might ever have that none of y'all will probably ever need to part waters so people can walk across on dry ground. I, I, I'm pretty, I pre feel pretty confident in that. I feel pretty confident in the fact that God's probably not ever going to call any of you guys to not only build a boat, but to grow a forest, harvest that wood, and build a huge boat so when he floods the earth again. Matter of fact, I know I'll never have to do that because he gave us a rainbow to promise he would never do that again, right? That's for you, Dakota. So, I know that. But here's what I want you to hear in this story because nothing like that happened. It says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. Peter and John were going to the church to the prayer meeting. There was not anything miraculous. There was not anything like just earth shattering. They were just going through life. They were just going through life. They were going to the store. They were going to eat. They were just going through life. How many times do we go through life and God's called us to do something just small, just little, and we miss it? How many times do we look at big things like maybe even to stand up here on this stage would be something huge that you're terrified. Okay, what about the guy in the break room? What about the lady in line at the grocery store? In this story in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were not doing anything miraculous. They were just going through life. Listen to this. It says, as they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one they called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Have any of y'all ever been downtown Birmingham? I promise you, if you go downtown Birmingham, downtown Atlanta, downtown anywhere just about, and, and you don't even have to go downtown anymore. Now you can just go down 459 or 280. There's people asking for money all the time. Right? I mean, I, I, I doubt very seriously that any of y'all have ever done life and not encountered somebody that came up and asked for money. I would just about be willing to bet that most of you sitting in here have done one or two things in that situation. You either give them some money, and you walk away, and you put your good church Christian butterfly wings on, you're like, oh, I'm so good. Oh, I gave him five bucks. I gave him ten bucks. And you have this warm, fuzzy feeling. I know you know that, and you feel that way because I've done it. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not judging. I'm telling you, I know that I know you. Or you did something else, and that's this. You walked away and said, man, I don't have no money. And there's been a lot of times I've said, man, I don't have any money because I don't have any money. Because all I have is a debit card, and I'm not going to give you my debit card, right? So I, I'm like, dude, I can't help you. And so I turn and I walk away. 
in those situations, we would feel like we didn't have anything. We had nothing to offer. But listen to what Peter and John said. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you. I don't have any money to give you. That thing that you're needing, that thing that you're wanting, I don't have it. I do not have it on me. I do not have the resources to give that. But, but, I'll give you what I have. I'll give you what I have. Guys, I need y'all to hear this right now. There is people in this world that you encounter every single day that they think that you have something that they need. And the thing that they think that they need from you is not what they need from you. What they need from you is that thing that lives in here. My Bible says that greater is he who lives in me than he is in the world. So why in the world would I give the world me? Because there is nothing here to give. But if Jesus resides in my heart, man, why would I not give that? And that's exactly what Peter looked at the dude and said. He said, man, I don't have any money, and then I don't have what you're asking, but I'm fixing to give you all I got. I'm fixing to give you all I have. Man, how different would the world be if we went through every single day with that mentality? That, hey, man, I don't have what you're asking for, but I'm fixing to give you all I got. Can you imagine the response on all those people in that church that day when that little lady walked in and gave all she had? She gave all she had. That's all he's asking for me and you is to give all you have. He's not asking, man, that thing, that gift that he gave you so freely is for you to give it away. For you to be willing to give it away. And I don't want to sound stupid or make you think that I'm just trying to, I just got to read through the story again. It said, then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and he helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Can I say this real quick? And and this was really not on my note deal, but like here, I just need you to hear this. I'm not saying, and we're not going to get into the debate on on whether or not when Benny Hinn would pop somebody in the head and they would lay out whether they were healed or not. I'm not going to do that today. But here's what I need you to hear. Because we we can discuss that biblically, whether miraculous healing is still a thing and and, and who gets to distribute that later. But here's what I need you to hear. The principle, the biblical principle, that thing I keep going back to, the biblical principles that we should live our lives by, the biblical principle says that when we're obedient to what God calls us to do, that miraculous things happen, it's solid as a rock. And I can stand before you and tell you when we're obedient to what God has called us to do. And I will tell you this. I shared it this week. God will never, ever, 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 ever be able to show you his faithfulness until you're willing to show him your faith. Until you're willing to show God how faith, how much faith you're going to have. God, I'm scared to death to go talk to this person. God, I'm scared to death to go just say, hey, can I pray with you? God, I'm scared to death to say, hey, man, I want you to know Jesus loves you. God, I'm scared to death, but I'm going to. I promise you he'll always be faithful. I promise you. And that's exactly what Peter and John got to experience. But towards the end of the story, so Peter grabbed, reached down, and touched him, and the Bible says that he jumped up and he was jumping around, and it says that they rushed out, and all the people saw what was going on. But I don't want you to miss verse 12. Acts chapter 3, verse 12. Because here's the thing, so many times we, we step out and we're like, okay, God, I'm going to do what you said. Okay, God, I'm going to do what you're calling me to do. Okay, God, I'm going to make this Facebook video. Okay, God, I'm going to step out on social media and let everybody know, even though I've been a heathen my whole life, I'm going to step out and I'm going to boldly proclaim you as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to step out at the workplace. I'm going to step out at the practice field. I'm going to step out at the grocery store. I'm going to step out. Here's what happens a lot of times. We miss opportunities. I've done it. I've done it. Like, like, like we, we, we step out and we're doing what God's called us to do. But listen to this in verse 12. It said, Peter saw his opportunity, and instead of walking away, instead of cowering it down, instead of missing it, it said, Peter saw his opportunity, and he addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? 
Guys, do y'all realize, like, man, we live in such a fallen world that, man, when things start happening, people are like, man, I cannot believe that. The reality is, if we all operated under this, it would be like every day. Like, I mean, we would see miraculous, crazy things happen every single day, but we don't. And Peter says, what's so surprising? And why stare at us like though we made this man walk by our own power or godliness? I'm telling y'all right now, man, I, I realize, and, 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 and maybe people come to me all the time, and they're like, dude, you're way too hard on yourself. No, you don't understand. I truly understand who I am, and I truly understand I have nothing to offer y'all. Like, like, I have nothing to offer y'all. I also know this. I can be a cocky, arrogant son of a gun. I can really be something worse than a son of a gun, but I'm trying to be easy on that because we're in church. But, like, I can be that guy. I know how to wear that shirt. I know how to walk that way. I know how to talk that way. I can be that guy. And every time somebody comes up and they're like, man, that was a great word. Well, I'm just telling you, you better go back to there because it was him and not me. Because I know this. If we start listening to people brag on us, then before long, it ain't God that's doing it, it's us. And there's been thousands of people that have fallen because they allowed opportunities just like this right here to go into their mind. And that's exactly what Peter said. Man, do y'all think we did this? Do you think me and John did it? Man, we couldn't even protect him when they came. When we lied, we, I, I, I didn't do this because I denied I even knew the dude. I denied I knew him. It wasn't me. But Peter says this, For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus who you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. It's all about Jesus. At the end of the day, Peter tells them, dude, it is, it's about Jesus. It's not about speaking ability. It's not about healing ability. It's not about praising ability. It's not about singing ability. It's not about ability, the ability to do something in the arena. It's not about, it's about Jesus. So many times we go through life and, and we've worked. And we put effort forth to do something, that thing that we didn't have enough. We, we, we didn't feel like we were adequate. We didn't feel like we had the supplies needed to perform the task. And then we finally do it. And then we start getting pats on the back. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. But when you realize it's about Jesus, guess what? It's up to Jesus whether or not you get anything out of this message because his word says that when his word goes forth, it will perform the purposes he had for and it will not return void. So guess what? I can't screw this up. All I got to do is tell you what his word said. Guess what? When I go to work and I say, hey, man, I'm just going to tell you the only reason that I can find joy, even though you see this crap I'm going through in my life, the only reason I can find joy in this, the only reason that I have, have a peace about me that per per ugh, I can't talk this morning, that outlasts all understanding is this Jesus. It's Jesus, because it ain't me. I'm telling you, if it was me, I would have been done, gotten rid of all of it. It's Jesus. Don't miss the opportunity. But so many times we do. And the reason I know that we do so many times is because I have. But here's what I want you to hear this morning, because I hear it all the time. Man, Matt, I would love to do that. And I, I just don't, I, I don't have the resources. I don't have the resources. I just told you, before he knitted you together in your mother's womb, he created you with a purpose. Here's the deal. The resources you probably think you need are not the ones that you are needed to perform the task he has. Because as I read through this book, none of the people that I look up to as heroes and like, man, that was an awesome deal, ever had what they needed. They were just obedient to what God had called them to do. So I know this is, that was great, and that's inspiring, but this is fixing to cut. My question to you this morning is, what are you going to do this week? What are you going to do this week? That thing God's calling you to, that you know that you don't have the ability, the resources, the, the stuff to do it, what are you going to do? Is this going to be another week that you go by and like, man, I can't do this? Is this going to be another week that you go to school and you're like, man, I can't be bold. I, I got to go along. I got I to gotta do these things so I fit in. Is this going to be another week of that? Are you going to give God the opportunity to do amazing and miraculous things through your life? Not because you're good, but simply because you're obedient. It's up to you. But if we ever want to see change, if we ever want to see the hand and the move of God, 
We've got to become obedient, even when we don't have enough. Let's pray. Father, I just come to you this morning, Lord. I thank you so much for your word, God. Man, you are so awesome. God, I thank you for this place. God, I thank you for the, the weather today. Lord, man, it is just, man, thank you for that breeze. God, I thank you for your still, small voice. God, I thank you for your word to lead and to guide us by. God, right now, I come to you, Lord, I, I, I want to intercede for somebody this morning. Lord, somebody that is struggling like you, your Holy Spirit is just speaking and talking to them in a mighty and powerful way to step out and do something. They look at what they have and they know it's not enough. Regardless if they're too young, too old, can't speak clearly, don't have the resources, whatever. God, I pray that today would be the day that they're like, here it is. It's all I got. A couple of fish and some bread. It's all I got. Two nickels to rub together. I can't speak good. I wish you would use somebody else, but here's all I got. I don't have the money, but I have you. Here's all I got. God, I pray that today would be the day that they stop running, that they allow your Holy Spirit just to have control of their life, and they step out boldly and do that thing that you call them to do. God, I'm going to pray even more so than that, Lord, that you allow them to see the same blessings that Peter and John saw this day. That, God, that you would show how you truly bless obedience. And we're just willing to do what you called, created, and made us to do. And Father, I pray that we would do that to change a world that needs Jesus. God, I love you and I praise you. And I ask these things in most precious name. Amen. Hey, real quick, and I, I, I hate to do this at the end, but because I don't, I hope what I said last, but anyway, next Sunday morning, we're going to have a men's breakfast. That ain't breakfast, that's a late dinner. 5.30 if you want to start, what time are y'all going to eat? 7. If you want to help them be here at 5.30 to cook, if you want to eat, be here at 7. Um, that's it, that's it, right? Cool. Hey, team leader meeting right after church in just a minute. Guys, I hope y'all have an awesome day.